So when I was a kid, I really wished that I had a robot to do my chores for me. Now I have a robot to do my work for me. But is this as cool as it sounds, or should we be worried? This is Legends of the Shadow Woods, and though I am publishing it, I didn't really write it. Or did I? I used ChatGPT to write this novella, and it's available on Amazon for 99 cents right now. Embark on a journey through the mystical Shadow Woods with Legends of the Shadow Woods, a collection of tales based on Greek mythology. Follow the hero Ajax as he battles sorceresses and monsters, uncovers ancient artifacts, and discovers his true destiny. These action-packed and thrilling stories will keep you on the edge of your seat as you delve deeper into the rich world of the Shadow Woods. AI wrote that blurb too. Along with using AI to write the book, I also used a different AI to make the cover. I'm sure everybody has heard of ChatGPT by now, but if you're not familiar, ChatGPT is a computer program that can understand and respond to written language like a human. It can generate text that is coherent and contextually relevant by making use of the input it receives and by learning from the examples of text it has been trained on. And guess what? ChatGPT wrote that part too. I've seen people using ChatGPT for all kinds of things lately, from writing essays and resumes to creating poetry and songs. In early January, I saw a video of somebody using ChatGPT to write a children's picture book and got the idea that, hey, I can do that too. So I did. But instead of a children's book, I wrote a fantasy novella. Initially, I wasn't even planning on sharing this. I just wanted to play around with the technology. But as I started working on it, I realized that I was putting kind of a decent amount of time into it. And I had so many notes that I thought maybe somebody else would find it interesting too. So in this video, I'll just talk about my process for creating this novella and also some of my thoughts on the program in general. So first getting into the generating process, I started using ChatGPT January 5th and I was just kind of learning how it works and generally playing around with it. On the 9th, I started working on this project. I didn't influence it too much with story direction or characters. When creating a world for these stories to take place in, I straight up asked it, what kind of fantasy world should I write about? And here's the responses that it gave me. One. A world with multiple intelligent species living together, such as humans, elves, dwarfs, and dragons. Two, a world with a unique magic system, such as one where magic is fueled by emotions, or one where only certain people are born with the ability to use magic. Three, a world that is inspired by a particular historical time period or culture, such as ancient Egypt or feudal Japan. Four, a world that is entirely made up of one biome, such as a world entirely covered in dense rainforests, or a world made up of floating islands in the sky. So this is actually a really good example of what most of my prompts and answers look like. I would ask ChatGPT for some options and I'd choose from the ones that I thought would work best. I went with a fantasy world based on Greek mythology because I thought it would give the stories the best chance of succeeding. So I'll get more into the limits later, but I thought that Greek mythology would work well because ChatGPT would already have a really large base of information to work off of. Another reason is that with the samples of text that I got it to produce previously were kind of vague in style. It kind of reminded me of how stories from mythology are told, so I thought the style would actually kind of fit it pretty well. So I think in its current state, it would be pretty difficult to get ChatGPT to write something like a contemporary novel. I figured a collection of short stories would be easier to manage because just of the format of using ChatGPT, it makes it kind of difficult to refer to earlier details, especially when regenerating prompts multiple times. There's just a lot of content to sift through, so it's easier if I can work in smaller pieces. The first story in the collection is called The Golden Feather of Friendship, and the AI actually named every story, every chapter, and the entire collection. So creating the first story was a lot more trial and error than the later ones, as it surprisingly took a lot of patience and time to learn exactly what prompts to do to get what I'm looking for. Initially, I worked in larger chunks of multiple paragraphs, but after a while, I realized that this was kind of making it a lot more difficult. Um, it was much easier to work in pieces of three paragraphs or less. So making the first story was very much seat of the pants as far as characters went, but I did have it create a basic outline before I began because I'm an outliner. I can't have zero outline, that doesn't work for me. So I would just give it one or two of the story points that it had already generated and ask it to create a chapter outline. And then I would just ask it to make adjustments when it came up with things that didn't really fit and I'd save the outline for future use. After that, it was a really repetitive process of prompting for a few paragraphs at a time, copy and pasting, regenerating, making adjustments, and prompting some more. And eventually I had a very rough draft of a short story. I'll get into a little bit of the editing process now. So like I said, I started generating on January 9th and I was done generating, editing, and proofreading the book by January 21st. The final product is just shy of 25,000 words. I worked on one story at a time, so I don't actually have a starting word count. So my estimate is there were 35 to 40,000 words of generated content before I really took any big editing steps. My goal with editing this project wasn't to bring it up to my standards or to use my style, but to work with what I had. I wanted to just produce something that was readable. That's it. Not good, not awesome, just readable. And I think, 
for the most part, I attain that. I really wanted to and tried to preserve the generated content wherever possible, as this is kind of a showcase for what the AI can do. My editing process for this project was not too dissimilar from my typical editing of my own novels. First a rough edit, then a more detailed pass using editing software, and finally a proofread. Out of these three steps, the rough edit most definitely took the longest, as there was just so much generated content to cut out. There's two main reasons for this. Firstly is that I would regenerate sections of the text multiple times, and then kind of Frankenstein the different versions together to get something I liked. So editing these into a semi-coherent chapter was pretty time consuming. But secondly is that ChatGPT has a tendency to repeat itself a lot. For a while, at the end of every single paragraph, it would summarize the character's goals of the chapter or of the whole story. So most paragraphs ended with a phrase like, and with that, Ajax knew he had to defeat the dragon once and for all. So I definitely did not put as much time into editing this project as I do other books, mostly because the more time I spent editing this book, the more I wanted to change. I had to work through it very carefully to try and preserve without overdoing my edits. There were things that I really wanted to change, but I left them there because they were kind of part of it. There are sentences that are out of place, there are lines of dialogue that are out of character or totally unnecessary, but I left them in whenever they weren't intrusive. I did change a lot while I was editing this. I think in places I maybe took the editing a little farther than I originally intended, but there were times when it was easier for me to just write a few lines of transition or fix the dialogue myself instead of having ChatGPT generate something better. But overall, the majority of the content was written by AI. If I look at the time I spent on this project, it's about equally split between generating and editing time, which actually surprised me a lot. I was expecting the generating to take longer than the editing, but with all the regenerating, it makes sense. And obviously I did not do any professional editing and I didn't have any beta readers for this thing either. Plus I only spent a couple of hours proofreading it. While ChatGPT can do a lot of things, it still has some limitations. So firstly, they have a content policy that says you can't use the program to generate certain types of content. Obviously they have to have these kind of policies for a multitude of reasons, but the limit to violence makes generating action fantasy stories a little bit challenging. <laughs> Once while I was generating content for these stories, I got a little warning that said this content may violate our content policy, and my prompt was not detailed or specifically asking for any kind of violent content. So in the context, I understand why it went there, but also it's not exactly what I asked for. Anyway, I didn't use any of the content generated from that prompt just in case. So I think a much bigger limit for me is its clumsy sentence structure. This is a limit that I think is going to be improved rapidly, but for now it makes generating stories kind of difficult and requires a lot of editing. I actually expected the generated text to have better grammar, flow, and structure than it actually does, but a lot of what it generates is wordy, repetitive, and kind of overall clumsy. But I guess it is good to know that real robots struggle with clumsy writing as much as I do. So on January 9th, ChatGPT had an update with improvements to the model for improvements across a broad range of subjects. This was the day I started generating for these stories, but I was using ChatGPT for a few days before that, and I think I saw some improvements. So I don't really have enough data for, to say for sure. Another limit or problem for me is the repeated phrases. On the OpenAI website, you can find some other known limitations, but this is the one I ran into the most. On their website, they say the model is often excessively verbose and overuses certain phrases. I'll have a link to the full page below, but overall, Overall, as I said earlier, it caused a lot of extra editing time to cut out the excessively verbose content. One more issue or limit that I ran into was that sometimes the AI forgets what it already wrote. When I was generating, it would change details along the way, like the color of a character's eyes. Now, this wasn't something I was expecting at all, especially considering how complex of concepts that it can keep track of at other times. Kind of my last little section here, what does this mean for the future of authors? And honestly, I don't really know. I've been watching programs like Dolly 2 and Mid Journey freak out artists for months. Suddenly, anyone with a few bucks for generator credits can create artwork with a few keystrokes that just a few years ago would have taken hours, days, or even weeks for someone who's worked years and years to grow their art skill to produce. To an indie author trying to get things rolling, technology like this could rapidly change the industry. If we thought KDP was a shakeup to the publishing industry, this is a whole different ballgame. Now this is obviously all my opinion, and I still don't really know what to think. For businesses, it's pretty frightening, honestly. But I think creatively, it's kind of amazing. I think ChatGPT and other similar programs that are bound to be on their way could be incredible tools for people who have stories they want to tell. Anyone can write a story, or for that matter, draw a picture. But it often takes years of practice to gain and sharpen your skills to be able to bring the image or the story in your mind onto the page. With technology like this, things are a little different. I won't say the barrier to entry is lower, but it's definitely different. Now I can do some basic photo manipulation, but I'm not an artist. This cover was the first thing I made in Dolly 2. 
I've watched some videos about how to use it, but with only a handful of generations, I had images that were basically exactly what I wanted. After that, I spent a couple of hours in Photoshop putting a few of the generated pictures together to make this cover. What I'm getting at is that soon I think ChatGPT could be as easy for non-writers to use as Dolly 2 is for non-artists. While I can't see this being a huge threat to authors with large fan bases and followings, I think mid-listers and us little guys will see the most change. What exactly that might be, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and find out, I guess. I also see the possibility of Amazon banning AI content like this in the future, or at least at some point in the future. So if that happens, I will put the ebook up on my website, sydneyfaith.com, instead. So if you would like to read Legends of the Shadow Woods, you can check it out on Amazon, link down below. And there are some of my other original, non-AI generated work there as well. All right, that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching. Bye.